welcome to unit six where we'll be learning all about inequalities. In this first lesson, we'll be doing an intro to inequalities where we'll start learning about writing, graphing, and identifying solutions to an inequality. All right, let's start things off with some of the very basic information that you need to know. First of all, symbols. If the arrow points to the right, the inequality sign points to the right, that is a greater than. If the inequality points to the left, that is a less than. If there is a line underneath your inequality symbol, then that means or equal to. So we've got greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to. Now on to a very important definition, a solution. This definition is very similar to the solution of an equation. It is a value that can be plugged in for a variable that makes the inequality true. Now the difference between the solution to an inequality and the solution to an equation is there's usually many acceptable answers for an inequality, while there's typically only one correct answer to an equation. So let's go through a few examples. The first one says, is three a solution to x is greater than five? Well, if I plug three in for x, that would mean we're being asked, is three greater than five? That is not true. Three is smaller than five. So we would say no. Next rest is seven a solution to x minus four is less than or equal to nine. So I'll plug seven in. Now this will be easier if we simplify. And finally, we're looking at the question, is three less than or equal to nine? And three is less than nine, so this is true. So yes, seven is a solution. Finally, we're asked, is two a solution to 2x is greater than or equal to 4. So I'll plug 2 in, and we have 2 times 2 is greater than or equal to 4, which if we simplify, says 4 is greater than or equal to 4. Well, 4 is not greater than 4, but 4 is equal to 4. So this is true, meaning that 2 is a solution. Here is a list of rules that can be used to know how to graph an inequality. If the arrow points to the left, we will shade to the left. If the arrow points to the right, we'll shade to the right. If there is no or equal to, we'll use an open dot, which I'll explain when we do our first graph. And if there is a line underneath, we'll use a closed dot, which again I'll explain. So number one, we have x is greater than three. So three is the number we're interested in. That's the number that we're talking about. So I'm gonna to go to my number line and put three somewhere on it. Now, just like when we're graphing a line, we like to have points, we need to put a point on this graph at three. Notice that I put an open dot. I'm always gonna start with an open dot and then think about whether or not I should close it. Our rules say that if there is no line underneath, then we keep it as an open dot. Well, since we don't have a line underneath, I'm gonna leave this as an open dot. Our rules also say that if it points to the right, we shade to the right. So I'm gonna shade this number line to the right and then draw an arrow to show that this goes on forever. Now let's take a second to see what I graphed and what it means. These points on the number line that got shaded, such as four, five, six, etc., those are all solutions. Anything that gets shaded is a solution to this inequality. All these numbers over here, such as 2, 1, etc., they're not solutions because they didn't get shaded. This point in the middle, 3, we left it as an open dot because it's not a solution. If I plugged 3 in, I would get 3 is greater than 3, which is not true. So 3 is not supposed to be a solution. What this open dot communicates is that 3 is not a solution, but everything that gets super close to 3 is. This is called a boundary point. Now let's graph number two. Negative two is the number that they're talking about, so that goes on the number line. I always start with an open dot, but this time, because there's a line underneath, this should get closed. So now we have a nice big closed dot at negative two. And since it's a less than, less thans points to the left, we shade to the left. Now what this means is all these points over here, they're all solutions negative 3, negative 4, etc. All these points over here, like negative 1, 0, 1, 2, etc., none of those are solutions because they didn't get shaded. 
and this point right here, negative 2, well think about it. If I plugged negative 2 in, this is a true statement because negative 2 equals negative 2. So negative 2 should be a solution, and that's why the dot is filled in, to show that it is a solution as well as a boundary. So to summarize, open dots are boundaries that aren't solutions, while closed dots are boundaries that are solutions. And these would be our final graphs. Now let's use these same rules to go backwards. If I start with a graph, let's try to write the inequality. Well, we always like to have x on the left. The rules are easier to follow when the variable is on the left. So I'm going to start by writing x, and wherever the point is, is the number we're interested in, and that's negative 4. Now what we have to figure out is what goes in between, what inequality symbol. Well, we shaded to the right. Notice that the right arrow is filled in, and look at what inequality symbol that shows. That's a greater than. Shade to the right means greater than. And now we have to ask ourselves, are we or equal to or not? Well, it's an open dot. And remember, open dot means that there's no line underneath. So x is greater than negative 4 is the inequality that goes with this graph. Let's try the same thing over here. x should be on the left. Negative 6 is the number we're interested in because it goes with the point. We shade to the left, which means less than. And this time our dot is filled in, which means or equal to. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 6. This is just going in reverse, starting with a graph and changing it to an inequality. The last thing we need to think about is word problems. How can we use these ideas for real world problems? We're going to dive deeper into that in the other lessons where we actually solve things. But for now we need to be able to set up the word problem. There are lots of key words that could be used in a word problem that tell you it's an inequality. For instance, at least is a phrase that's used to mean greater than or equal to. No more than is a phrase that can be used to mean less than or equal to. There are lots of examples of these, so you usually have to think about them. There's phrases such as more than, less than, greater than, maximum, minimum, there's lots of different words, so you need to be able to think about what the words mean. In this example, it says a golfer can have no more than 14 clubs in their bag. So since we're talking about clubs in their bag, I'm going to define that as my x. And then we're going to write an inequality over here. Remember, we like to have x on the left of the inequality. And 14 seems like the number we're interested in, so I'm going to put that on the right. No more than means that we should have less than 14, so I'm going to put a less than symbol. And then the one thing we got to think about is, should we include the boundary number? So we're basically going to ask, is this a solution to this inequality? So is 14 no more than 14? Yeah, it's not bigger than 14, and that's all this is saying is you can't be bigger than 14, and 14 isn't. So we need to make sure that our inequality allows 14 to be a solution, and that means we're going to make it an or equal to problem. These problems can be a little bit tricky, so make sure you're looking at the resources we've provided to see some examples, and they should get easier with more examples that you see. So let's highlight some of the takeaways of this introductory lesson. First, solutions are values for x that make an inequality true when they're plugged in. The graph of an inequality is the visual representation of all the inequality's many solutions. If the inequality symbol points to the left, shade to the left. If the symbol points to the right, shade to the right. But that rule only works if the variable's on the left side of the inequality. If you came away with anything else, please write that down now. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next lesson.